Hello friends, this is Scott, and I'm sitting in my, kind of in my front room of my house in Salt Lake today, and I was out raking leaves, and I was thinking the whole time I'm out there, and I should still be out there working, because we don't have much good weather left, but I, I just felt like the need to, 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 to do this video. And this is all stemming from my last video where I used a couple old tractor tires to make a worm compost bin down at the hobby farm. And, you know, you're inevitably, you know, going to get the comments about, oh, you're going to poison yourself, you're going to contaminate the soil, you're going to do all these things. Okay? Is that really true? And if it is true, what is the extent? And what are the other variables that we have out there in the environment that we need to worry about? Again, I'm not a soil scientist. I'm not a chemist. I'm, you know, I'm just a gardener by practice my whole life. So uh, I'm just going to kind of give you my perspective and ask, you know, bring up some questions about this topic that some people think are, is so obvious that, oh my God, you can't use tires in the garden. Let's talk about that. Is that really true? And if it is true, are some of the things we do with tires uh, to recycle them, are they worse than the actual uh, using a tire in the garden? So let's, let's start about, talk about that. Now in the garden, you know, we have lots of uh, materials that, that every nursery sells, whether they're landscape timbers that are treated, uh, you know, obviously with lots of arsenic and other types of you know, toxic chemicals to humans. I don't think there's any debate that tires have chemicals in them that cause, you know, they're carcinogens that could cause cancer. Okay, have been proven to cause cancer. I'll give you that point, okay? But isn't the bigger issue, what is it that makes up a tire? We have a problem with tires. We've got millions and billions and trillions of tires throughout the world. They're not going away. They are a real problem in our society. We have nature people that are, you know, building our ships out of them and people are using them in gardens. People are using them for, to water livestock in them. They're doing lots of things with them. But commercially, when we recycle tires, there's a lot of literature out there that says that the actual process of recycling a tire is, is worse for the environment than, than not doing anything with them at all. So yeah, we could make something out of a tire, but if we're worried about whether a tire is gonna decompose in the garden, I think that's the first question that we need to ask ourselves. Is it true that tires decompose and leach things into the environment? I don't think the studies really show us that that's, that's truly the case. What's usually the case is, you know, we all know tires will sit there and not do anything for, you know, hundreds of years, right? So they don't appear to be degrading in any quick capacity. Let's talk about asphalt shingles. You know, we all, most of our houses in society, at least in the United States, have asphalt shingles. You know, I have a rain barrel that's collected water off the roof. So all those, you know, those things degrade in, in 10, 20 years, 30 years. So where's all that chemical going? Those are asphalt, same type of chemicals, I would assume. They're going down off our, or being rained on the roof, down or downspout into our landscaping. Okay, so does that automatically make our groundwater toxic? Because if, it, if, if that's the case, and we're really so worried about the leaching, we're all, in, we're all in worse shape than we thought we were. Okay, so the argument can be, is a tire in an inert state? Are the chemicals that are maybe possible carcinogens or are carcinogens, are they in a state that's gonna decompose when they're left in a tire? Now in the construction industry, or the recycling industry, what do they do with tires? Okay, we're so worried about the chemicals inside that tire breaking down. Well, what happens if we shred those tires like they do or they make road base or they, well, whatever other products they make out of, out of tires? They're shredding those tires. They're putting that, those, they're separating those chemicals and putting them into the environment like a road base, okay? So what, what happens when it rains on the road base? All those chemicals gonna automatically leach into the ground? And are they gonna, you know, is all of our groundwater contaminated with those? We're all, we're all screwed anyway, you know? I don't think we, you know, I guess maybe that is the case. Maybe we are all in trouble and we're all worried about the little minute things in our own, in our own you know, yards, our own environments that really don't make a hill of bean difference because overall society is gonna kill us anyway, right? With all the chemicals that we use. My, my approach to this channel is, you know, I'm just a simple guy. I wanna make my best, you know, live my best rural life in the city and now I bought this hobby farm in the country. I wanna use what's there. Okay, so my last video, I took a bunch of tires, you know, last year down to recycle. Felt good about it. Oh, I'm recycling these tires. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them to good use or somebody else will get a good use to it. Well, the process of recycling those tires, what's going to happen to our environment? Am I just passing the problem downstream to somebody else? Or would it have been better if I would have just used them in my own yard and, and, and kept them there? Because there could possibly be the truth that tires are pretty inert. The chemicals inside are bonded. 
So maybe they're not actually leaching in the soil. Now I want feedback. You know, I don't want to, I don't have all the time in the world to go do a bunch of research on this. Although it'd be very interesting if I was in college, I would probably do a research paper on this topic now that it's so, it's such <laughs> stuck in my brain. But let's, let's talk about all these other types of, of materials too that could be problematic, okay? Arsenic in our, in our uh, railroad ties that we put in our garden. Okay, so do the, that stuff, does it really leach it in the soil? And if it does, let's look at the other variable. Do plants take up minerals and, and, com and compounds into their bodies through the water and through feed that they don't want or don't need? Are they automatically gonna pull arsenic out of the ground? Are they automatically gonna pull the, you know, the compounds and rubber tires and, and absorb that? Or do plants really take what they, what they need out of the soil and leave what they don't in the soil? Again, I'm not a soil scientist. I'm sure contamination can happen. I think if we shredded up tires and we, and we stuck them on, you know, as, as a mulch and we watered it in, yeah, we could have a lot of toxic stuff in the soil, obviously, because it's in small particles. But in a tire that's bonded, that's, that's stuck in there, all the chemicals are, are in an inert state, are they really decomposing when we know a tire can sit there for hundreds of years and, and, and not do anything? Why would these eco-villages use these tires Every time it rains, it's going right down their walls of their, of their eco-village into their soil, and then they're growing, they're growing vegetables and, and, and their food. So why aren't they afraid of that? Okay, so maybe there's a bigger issue here. Maybe the actual process of recycling tires is worse than using tires in other capacities, whether it's construction, landscaping, gardening, or whatever else. You know, that's a legitimate question, I think, that we really need to answer. I don't think the big chemical companies are doing any research to tell us that, oh, this is bad, because they've got, they've got you know, they're, they're making this product, and they've, they've got a lot of issues with it if, if they're, you know, responsible for all this kind of bad stuff. But I'm a realtor, you know, in our business, you know, we're worried about, um, you know, insulations and, and things that have asbestos, okay? Asbestos is very damaging and cancer-causing or disease-causing if, if it's airborne, okay? We have a lot of construction stuff that they still make that has asbestos in it. But what makes it safe, safe, is that it's not, it's inert, okay? It's covered up, it's enclosed, it's encapsulated. So if you're gonna do, if you buy a home that has a popcorn ceiling that has asbestos in it, it's not gonna do anything if you just paint over it, okay? It's not gonna do anything to you if you put a, another false ceiling over it, okay? What's gonna get you is if you tear it out and you don't do it with the proper equipment you know, the proper breathing equipment and, and disposal equipment. So if you just paint it, it's encapsulated. Okay, lead-based paint, you know, prior to 1978, all of our paint had lead in it, okay? So now we have a disclosure that says about lead-based paint. We have to warn everybody in any home that's built prior to 1978, oh my God, there's lead-based paint in here. Well, once you paint it, it's encapsulated. It doesn't mean anything. Unless you're licking the walls or the paint is peeling or you have your children, things like that, that could get into it or, you know, that would be a concern. But as soon as you paint a, over lead-based paint, okay, especially with a couple coats, which we all do, it's not an issue, okay? If you disturb it and mess with it, yeah. Or you lick the walls, maybe you'll have a problem. But it's not, it's not something that, that, you know, we've managed it. It's not something that we have to be concerned about. So let's go back to tires, okay? We have tires that are made of chemicals. Okay, those chemicals are nasty, okay? It's probably better not to have tires in the garden. But again, a lot of us don't have all the building materials on hand. We don't have all the money, you know? I have a couple tires that I wanted to use that I had on the property that were there. They existed. They are an issue. They are a problem. What am I gonna do with them? Do I send them to a recycling center? Is that better? Or is it better that I use them in my garden to, to grow worms? Now, in theory, okay, I put, comp I put materials, leaves and things into the tires. The worms break that material down. If stuff's leaching out of the tires, obviously the worm could be consuming that. Then I take those and feed them to my chickens and then, or put the compost into the garden and then I'm right, or make liquid fertilizer and I'm, I've, I've just introduced those chemicals all through my whole gardening process. Well, I go back to asphalt shingles, okay? If that's really what's going on, then we're all in deep doo-doo. Because again, if you've ever looked at a rain barrel, it's with all that, the rain coming off into that barrel, how dirty and grungy and greasy that water is, all that water is going into our ground soil. It's going into all of our vegetables in our garden. It's going into the trees that are producing fruit, if we're growing fruit trees. Do those plants really uptake all that material? And if they do, we're in deep doo-doo because there's no way we're gonna avoid it, okay? Because the rain's coming, I don't think we're gonna stop putting asphalt shingles. I don't think we're gonna stop making tires and uh, putting them on cars, I think the greater human good is that we have tires. Greater human good is that we have asphalt shingles. Now, in my garden, do I need to use tires? 
Okay, I don't like tires. I think they're ugly. Okay, but I had two big tires, and I thought, hey, I could I could make something out of these, and it would help me with rodents. It would be something that's going to last forever. It's going to keep animals out. I don't have to worry about rebuilding it or it degrading, and it'll be so it'll all be contained. And I can you know have a nice container that I can actually put meats and other things that I normally wouldn't compost in there, and I don't I don't have to worry about animals because I can I can enclose that so that they don't get in. Okay, and the smells are not gonna be an issue because I'm gonna bury them into that bin. It's away from the house, so I can compost and actually throw less things to the landfill. So for me, it's a win-win. I've got a structure that's already there that I could use. I've got the raw materials, I've got the red worms, and I've got kitchen scraps that I don't wanna throw away. So why don't we, you know, win-win-win, right? Well, let's say that there is some chemicals that leach out of those tires. And let's say that some of that can get into my food supply, okay? Is that still worse than having tires recycled and used as road base that it gets into everybody's, you know, water, everybody's groundwater, everybody's, you know, food eventually? Because water is where it all goes, right? It all runs off. That's why we have all the pollution problems in the Gulf of Mexico and everything else is because water transports extra, you know, chemicals from fertilizers, pesticides, or whatever else we have. And then it creates dead zones. So, yeah. Chemicals are a problem if they are not inert, if they are not in a finished product, and if that product is gonna degrade, we have to be concerned about it, okay? I'd be much more concerned about a landscape timber and planting carrots and root crops right next to my landscape timber, okay? That would be, that to me, I don't do that because that's something that, uh, that would bother me, okay? But I, you know, at this point, I may be totally wrong again. I'm no scientist, I'm just, you know, voicing an opinion, but it's not such a simple answer to get a comment on a video that says, oh, that's a great idea, but you're going to kill yourself. You're going to contaminate your garden. You're going to do blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, do your research. Well, maybe we all need to do a little bit more research. Maybe we all need to figure out what's the worst case scenario. You know, we have billions of tires or trillions or whatever they are. Okay, they're not going away. We have to do something with those tires because that's a pollution problem in itself. But I'm not saying everybody needs to go put tires in their garden, but if we can use some of those tires and use them in a way that's safe and compatible with, with food production or construction, you know, we should be doing that rather than shredding it out, breaking them down into their individual components, which then are much more readily uh, accessible by everything in the environment when the wind blows. Okay. So food for thought. Maybe the, it's not so obvious that, oh my God, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're going to kill yourself with, with using something like this. Well, I think you know, maybe we are. But I think we need to look, think about it a little bit deeper. And we got to understand that if that's really the case, we're, we have bigger problems, okay? And I'm just saying, like I was saying, from asphalt shingles, we're, we're, we're dying, we would die from our roofs, okay? I'd be more concerned about using that water than I would be using an inert tire in my garden to, to raise worms. Could it cause problems for me? Yes, I need to do some more research. Now, I don't have a lot of time to do a ton of research. So for you soil scientists out there, or people that agree, disagree, or whatever, Let's open this up for comments and let's talk about it. I want to do a follow-up video. What is your opinion on tires? Because I don't think the research is really totally clear as to whether that's a terrible idea. Again, I don't like tires. My wife hates tires. I would never use tires in the garden just to plant stuff in, I don't think. But to, is it, do you think they're a problem just to compost with them? Let me know your thoughts. I'd be, uh, let's have a discussion about this. You know, I've never thought really much about having a podcast, but there's a lot of these kind of topics that come up now and then that, you know, if my channel grows to the point that I'm relevant, then I'm going to think that maybe a podcast would be a, a great thing because, you know, these are, these are topics that we all should talk about and all discuss. And it's not always so obvious. It's so easy for somebody to tell us, oh, it's bad. Well, is it really? But it's, if it is bad, how bad is it? And they exist. Okay. We have to do something with these tires. Okay. So let's, uh, let's really have an accurate discussion and figure out what is really the truth behind tires in the garden. Hey, thanks for watching today. And I got to get back to raking more leaves, but I kind of had to stop because this was, this was bugging me. So anyway, I appreciate the comments and I'm not, you know, it's not a bad comment when somebody tells me that, you know, oh, you're going to kill yourself. Okay. Thank you for that comment. Because if I, if I am, I appreciate you reminding me that that's the case. My wife would believe that. I don't know if I believe that though. Let me know your thoughts. Have a great day in the garden and uh, hope you get all your uh, fall projects done before the, the dead of winter takes us out. Thank you.